Hello, and welcome back to our OpenTK Platformer tutorial series. My name is Sil, and in this part we'll be looking into how to make a Sprite Batch class. Now technically speaking, I don't think Sprite Batch is the right name for it. However, I worked in XNA for a long time, and got really used to typing Sprite Batch. And since this class is essentially going to be doing the same thing, just in a very simple way, I tend to find the easiest to call it the same thing. Essentially all this class is going to do is encapsulate our 2D draw calls, so rather than having to find the coordinates for each vertex of every sprite that we draw, we'll be able to call just one function in our sprite batch class that will draw a sprite for us. So without further ado, go ahead and right click on your project, select add, class, I'm going to call mine sprite batch, you can also call it something like drawing, and then in this class we're going to do public static draw, and we're going to want a few parameters here. So first we're going to want to be passed a texture 2D. And before I forget, be using OpenTK and using OpenTK.graphics.OpenGL as well as using System.Drawing. And then back on our inputs, we'll do Vector2 Position. We'll have a Vector2 Scale. We'll have a Color Color. And we'll do a Vector2 Origin. That should be everything we need. Now essentially all this function is going to do is it's going to make all the GL calls necessary to bind our texture and draw it at this position with this scale, color, and origin. Now there's many ways to do this. However, I don't really like writing the same code four times. So what I'm going to do is make an array of vector twos. And then in a for statement, I'll loop through those vector twos and do certain manipulations on them. So to start off, we're going to do vector two array, and we'll call this vertices equals new vector2 and we'll make it have a size of 4 and then we'll open curly brackets put a semicolon at the end and we're going to do new vector2 we're going to do 0 0 for the first one we'll copy this line paste it three times for the second one it'll be 1 0 third one will be 1 1 and the fourth one will be 0 1 and this essentially just represents the four corners of our sprite now before the for statement we're going to bind our texture so we're going to do gl.bindTexture, TextureTarget.Texture2D, and for the end texture, we'll do Texture.ID. And then we need to call gl.begin, so we'll do gl.begin, and we're going to do primitive type dot quads, and we'll go ahead and add gl.end as well. And then in between these two, we'll do our for loop. So we'll do for int i equals 0, i is less than 4, i plus plus, which basically means it'll just loop through four times. So first thing we want to do is set the color. So we'll do gl.color3. And actually, in hindsight, to minimize gl calls, we're going to put the color3 on the outside of this for loop. Since we don't need specific colors for each and every vertex, there's only going to be one color overall. So we'll do on the outside of the for loop with we'll a gl dot color three. We'll pass it the color that we were passed. Now inside the for loop, we'll do gl dot text coordinate. And for the x and y value, we'll go ahead and grab the corner that we defined in our vertices array. So we'll do vertices i. Now we want to do a little bit of a manipulation on the vertices array. So first of all, we'll multiply our values by the width and height of the texture that was passed us. So we'll do vertices i dot x times equals texture dot width, and we'll copy that and do the same thing for y, only multiply by the height. And then we're going to want to offset the position by the origin, so we'll do vertices i minus equals origin. That way when we scale it, the center will be correctly aligned at the origin, which is what we're going to do next. So we're going to do vertices i times equals scale. And then last but not least, we'll translate it to the position. So we'll do vertices i plus equals position. Now that our corresponding vertices are in the right place, we're going to call gl.vertex2. So gl.vertex2. And we'll pass it vertices i. And it looks like I forgot to add void in our function declaration. And now our draw call should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Now there's one other function that we want a sprite batch class to perform and that is setting up an orthographic view for us. So in our sprite batch class we're going to go down, add a function, public static void begin, and we're going to need to be past the screen width and screen height, so we're going to do int screen width, and 
int screen height. And the first thing we want to do is set the matrix mode, so we'll do gl dot matrix mode. And do matrix mode dot projection, since we'll be working on the projection matrix. Then we're going to load the identity again, we'll do gl dot load identity. And we're going to do gl dot ortho. And we still want 0, 0 to be the center, but instead of negative 1 and 1 to be the left and right, we're going to make one unit equal to one pixel on the screen. So what we'll have to do for the left, it'll be negative screen width divided by 2. For the right, it'll be screen width divided by 2. For the bottom, screen height divided by 2. And for the top, negative screen height divided by 2. And for the Z nearer, we'll just put 0.1F and 0.1F at the moment. And since it'll typecast these as floats already, we're going to go ahead and add F at the end of these so that they'll keep their floating point values. Sorry, I meant to say 1F for the Z far. And now back in our game class. In our on render frame function, before view.applyTransform, we have this gl.loadidentity. We're going to replace that with spritebatch.begin. And it's going to ask for the screen width and screen height. So we'll pass it this.width and this.height. Then we'll go ahead and test this. So let's get rid of everything between gl.end and gl.bindTexture here. And instead, we'll do spritebatch.draw. For the texture, we'll pass it that texture we loaded in earlier. For the position, we'll do vector2.0. For the scale, we'll do like 2f. For the color, we'll do color.green. And for the origin, let's try something like new vector2, like 10, 50. Whoops, forgot that we made our scale of vector2. So we're going to do new vector2 here, 2f, 2f. And the reason I made it a vector2 is so that we can scale in the x and y direction independently. And we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and test this out. And we don't actually get anything at the moment. I think the cause for that is actually our z near and z far plane. So we're going to go back to our sprite batch class. And instead of 0 0.1 for the z near, we're going to just do 0f. I've been told before that the ratio between z near and z far has to be something other than 0 and undefined. However, this seems to work just fine. And since we're drawing all of our vertices at 0 z value, if you make the z near plane anything above 0, nothing will get drawn. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this. Go ahead and run this now, and you'll see that we got our sprite. Now it's a little big. That's because we scaled it by 2, and our sprite is already quite big. So we'll go ahead and try scaling it by like 0 0.2. And there you are. And we've encapsulated all of those GL calls into one draw function. This will make it a lot easier later on. If we want, we can try drawing more than one. If we copy this line, maybe change the position that they're drawn at. Now you can see that we got multiple sprites being drawn here. And we can draw them different colors. And voila! That'll about wrap up this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be adding just a little bit more to our sprite batch class in the way of overload functions for our draw call, as well as working on tweening in our view class. Hope to see you there!